I'm Eric the History Detective. My daughters keep telling me I need to make a YouTube channel to show everybody how I relic hunt. Today I'm headed to a Union campsite and this is going to be my first video. I'm going to bring you along with me. We'll see what we can find here in Northern Virginia. All right, we have arrived. We are out here, as I said earlier, in Northern Virginia. We are at a Union winter campsite, which was here at this location in the winter of 1864. It's a large, large campsite. Lots of relics have come out of here uh, over the years that I have seen. In fact, I don't remember anybody coming out of here empty handed. You really can never dig it all. So I'm gonna flip you around so you can kind of see where the field is. We're gonna be working today. That's it right out there. We are on the backside of what was once that campsite. And I'm gonna go out there and today I'm gonna use my Mind Lab GPX 4500. We'll mark a couple targets, we'll dig them up together, see what we can find. All right guys, nothing spectacular just yet, but a good lesson right here in digging this very large hole. I told you I was gonna pull my Mind Lab out, which I am in just a minute, but the two metal detectors I generally use are the Mind Lab and this White's MXT Pro. When you look over here at this White's, you see that white part right there? And for my newbie friends, that's called a coil. So I recently swapped up coils and I run this SEF. And that SEF, which is phenomenal, hit in this hole this piece of iron and that beer can. Why am I showing you guys this? Because that beer can was 15 inches down. And that's ridiculous depth for a MXT. And that coil is really worth its weight in gold when it comes to metal detecting. It not only told me that that good metal aluminum was down there, but it also read it right through this very large piece of iron. And I can tell you right now, if there was a plate down there, an Eagle breastplate, a US uh, cartridge box plate or belt buckle, that coil right there on this machine would have read it 100%. So just some lessons here. And uh, I do like to teach people how to metal detect. So I do wanna share some of the uh, trade secrets with you as I make these videos. And uh, if you get a hole and you start digging and your detector's telling you there's a good signal down there, you keep going until you get it. All right, be back shortly. All right, guys, as uh, promised, there's my mine lab. I've been out here, as you can see, on a little bit of a ridge here in this campsite. We have our first really good Civil War find. Um, if you look down, I've got a hole here. It's a little dark, hard to see, but that's 10 inches down. 10 inches down, I threw the dirt out. Got a nice target. It is right there. That is going to be our first Civil War bullet of the day. And you know what? That sucker looks like a gardener. It sure does, which is predominantly a Confederate bullet, which makes sense. Um, the Confeds were through here lots during the war. Uh, this was a very busy area. And there you go. And if you look over here, it might be a little hard to see. I'll point for you. You'll see a stick in the ground right there. A little bit further out, there's another one right over here. And what I do with that mine lab is, as I get targets, I'll get three to five targets, and I just mark them with my little wooden dowel, and then I'll dig them up all at one time. And then I'll go out and I'll hit some more targets. So I'll just kind of bounce between detecting and digging, and I'm gonna dig those up right now. They were really good hits. Let's see what we find. All right, we got our other two holes dug out. We got skunked on these and that's okay. This one over here had a modern bullet and that one over there had a fence nail. And since I had them open, I just wanted to show you guys how messy this can be. I got dirt slung around all over the place and I got the sod plug sitting up here. If I walk over here, here's the first one we dug. You can see that it's all covered back up and I got as much of the dirt there out of the field as I could. If you want to maintain uh, your metal detecting permission, and you want them to recommend you to other people, I strongly recommend whenever you go out digging, you clean up your site, you never leave a hole open, and it should look like that over there when you're done. All right, let's hit it for a little bit more, see what we can find. All right, the trusty mine lab strikes again. Got another hole opened up. Look over here, I got a couple more targets opened up, and shocker, right over here behind me is where I found that uh, first bullet. And we opened this one up about six or eight inches down. If you look right over here, and in our pile you see a little bit of white. What this is right here, it is a piece of camp lead. So during the Civil War, they uh, melted lead in their fires. They also used the powder from the bullets to start their fires, and they would just throw the bullets in there. 
Um, those guys were really amazing artists too. Sometimes they'd carve up lead, they'd hammer lead out, they'd use it for pencils, write letters home with it. And actually we got a really nice hunk of camp lead right there. And I got two more targets to dig up and we'll be back shortly. All right guys, a, uh, another really good target, another good find. Looks like we're getting ourselves into a little bullet dump up here. And if we look right out here, sorry, I'm new to this. I'm pointing at it and I'm trying to work with the sun. I'll bring it up here for you guys to see. Right there in the dirt, we got another one. And I'm being a bad history detective today. And the reason I say that is because I took those uh, two bullets out of my pocket. I really cleaned them up good. They're not Confederate bullets. They are Sharps bullets, which are distinctly Union bullets. There you go. So all of these finds today so far are Sharps, and there is another beautiful one right there. Uh, I thought about something too I wanted to tell you guys. For those people who are new to this, you'll notice I'm running about 10 inches down in these holes. Um, that's pretty deep. The reason being is, of course, if you look out here, uh, this was a farm and this field has been plowed many, many times. And what happens over the years is these bullets and other relics work their way down really deep um, to what's called the plow line. And the plow line can be anywhere from 16 to 24 inches, depending on what kind of plows they used uh, post-war. And on the flip side of that, sometimes they turn those relics up and they'll be near the surface. So they're actually mixed in the soil somewhere from below the grass roots all the way down to the plow line, whatever depth the farmer's plow was for those years they were going through the field. And I'm finding these, like I said, about 10 inches down. Got another two holes to dig. We'll see what comes out of there and see you soon. All right, guys, I got another one here. It's still in the hole. I'm just gonna kind of pan around. Maybe you can see it. If not, I am going to point it out for you. It's over here in the wall, right there. That's gonna be another bullet. We'll take that out of there, careful. Bring it on up, see what we got. Of course, I'm gonna guess it's a Sharps because there's a whole pile of them up here. And let's see, there you go. All right, we're having a beautiful day here in Virginia. It's January, but the sun is shining. It's about 55 degrees outside. I'm not a huge fan of winter, so I'll call that a win. That little white mark you see on there, kind of silvery, is where I just bumped it with my shovel because it was on the edge. So we'll put that one in our pocket and uh, we'll keep at it. Hoping that maybe we'll get an eagle button out of here today. That'd be a really good find. All right. All right, guys, here we go again. Here's our trusty mine lab sitting out there in the sun. Popped open another hole and man, we are on it today. Because if we look right down here, hidden in that dirt, there's going to be another sharps. Yes, it is. Let's get that out of there. There it is. Give that a little little wipe off there you go all right yeah we're just racking them up today I'll tell you guys something about detecting um, I've been doing this now for 20 years and I've accumulated quite a, de a detecting collection and relic hunting collection because I don't just use the detectors there's lots of other things I do out here um, but uh, I will tell you a good day metal detecting is to get out and go hiking and really enjoy yourself uh, in some nice weather outdoors. And a great day metal detecting is to bring home one really good find. And today we're gonna be bringing home a lot of good finds and that's a phenomenal day of enjoyment metal detecting. So there we go. I've got another hour or so before I gotta get out of here today and um, let's see what we can find. All right. All right guys. It's what we've been looking for. I got another hole opened up here, eight to 10 inches. There's my little pin pointer. And I have seen over here the color that I want to see. Look right in here. Again, forgive me, first time I've done this, but do you see that green right there? That is the green that we are looking for. Let's hope it's something good. We'll pick it up here. Man, I'm hoping that's a button. Pretty close. What we got right here is a grommet. That is definitely a Civil War era grommet. Let me drop it down in here. 
All right, take a look right there. This is a boot ferrule. Let me blow the dirt out of it. <laughs> or not. All right, what is a boot ferrule? Well, that's what your lace goes through in your boot right there. So that is a good find, definitely from that campsite that was here at one time. So we are still working. I've got about 30 more minutes out here. We'll see what else we can find. All right, running out of time, but uh, another good find. Can you see it out there in the pile? It is right there. We'll zoom in on that. Bet you can already guess what we got right there. If you've watched this video, we do have another bullet. And that one was actually kind of shallow. Oh, this is gonna be good. All right, I know what this is. There you go. That is a Burnside carbine bullet. That's exactly what that is. That's a nice one. Really nice, good find right there. The old burn side. All right. I'm gonna try to find a few more things before we get out of here today. All right, guys, I'm back at the Jeep loading up for the day. Uh, the last thing I found up there on that ridge line was another small little uh, lead melt. After that, there really wasn't anything. Uh, but that was a great day. Sharps carbine bullets, burn side bullet, a uh, little boot ferrule, also called the Brogan shoe boot ferrule. Uh, a couple of lead melts. That's good stuff. I'm hoping to get back out here probably tomorrow and uh, do a little bit more with the mine lab. If you guys like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'm going to try to make this a regular thing. I'd love to teach you guys how I do this, give you some pointers. Uh, this is just me getting into it. And I know it's a little bit of a bumpy start, but uh, there's a lot to learn about relic hunting. I not only do the detector work, dirt sifting, uh, privy probing, if you want to look up what that is. I do all kinds of water hunting and uh, you know, I spend a lot of my days off, take the kids out, have some fun and see if we can't find things. One day I'll bring you down into my little museum and I will uh, show you guys everything I found over the years and uh, hopefully I can give you some pointers to get you out there and get you started. If you just enjoy watching the videos, great. Uh, hunting history can be lots and lots of fun. Thanks guys. See you next time.